Good day everyone. I am Oliver D. Exalta. I am Jomar Basconcilio. I am Eileen E. Gabantak. I am Luis M. Binervaha. I am Trisha Ann Brown Santos and today we, the group 5, will be presenting our case study entitled The Effects of Futurification on Surface Water Quality, a case study on the Laguna Lake. So let's begin. Lake. Lake is a region filled with water and is separated from any waterway or other outlet that serves to drain or feed the lake. It is not a portion of the sea, even though they are like a part of ocean. This is very helpful, most especially in agricultural part, and to those people who rely on them. Laguna de Bay, or also known as Laguna Lake, is located at southeast of Metro Manila. It is the largest lake in the Philippines. This lake provides more than 40% of fish in the area nearby the lake. According to their government, around 60% of the estimated 8.4 million individuals living in Laguna de Bay area release their solid and liquid waste in the lake and the massive rate of it came from agricultural waste and the rest are from domestic and industrial. Based to DENR, or also known as Department of Environmental and Natural Resources, domestic and industrial waste contribute nearly similarly at 30% each. In the meantime, agricultural waste take up the remaining 40%. In a recent sensitivity waste load demonstration run by the Laguna Lake Development Authorities and Integrated Waste Resources Administration Division, it revealed that 70% of biochemical oxygen demands loading came from family units, 19% from industries, and 11% came from land runoff erosion. Eutrophication causes an abundance of particulate substances such as phytoplankton, zooplankton, microbic organism, fungi, and debris on which the turbidity and coloration of the water depends. Eutrophication is how lakes get phosphorus, nitrogen, and sediment from the encompassing watershed. Human activities is the main cause of eutrophication due to their reliance on utilizing nitrate and phosphate fertilizers. Agricultural practices and fertilizers of the garden and other areas contribute to phosphate and nitrate nutrient collection. People can speed up eutrophication by adding excess nutrients and sediments. People can speed up eutrophication by adding excess nutrients and sediments rapidly, where the lake will alter tropic states in a matter of decades. So let's proceed to the background of the study. According to the Wang et al. in 2017, water temperature, total phosphorus, and nitrogen in water eutrophication can influence algae development by analyzing extended values. They test the including chlorophyll A, total phosphorus, total nitrogen, COD, and transparency of the lake that they used as the subject. And by the help of Bayesian method, they get a higher accuracy of 96% in eutrophication assessment. And let's proceed on the objectives of the case study. We have two main objectives in the study. The main objective of this study is to assess the eutrophication levels in Laguna Lake. Specifically, this study aims to first to determine the leading cause of eutrophication of Laguna Lake and lastly define a solution in controlling eutrophication of Laguna Lake. Scope and delimitation. This study focuses on the causes of eutrophication of Laguna Lake and how it can be controlled. Other lakes and why they experience eutrophication will not be tackled in this study. Significance of the study This study hopes to assess the eutrophication levels in Laguna Lake. Furthermore, the study may eventually provide essential information to the following. First, engineering students. This research may inspire many future engineers to provide a solution to the environmental effects of eutrophication, given that the demand for freshwater resources is expected to increase dramatically. 
and protecting diminishing water resources has become one of the most pressing environmental issues nowadays. Second, environmentalists or the local government units. The data gather may serve as a reference for future rehabilitation of Laguna Lake. This research will give them an overview or background on the leading effects of eutrophication in Laguna Lake and further finding the solutions on how it can be controlled. Lastly, the future researchers. They may be motivated to undertake similar studies on assessing eutrophication levels in Laguna Lake and the data gathered may be used as a reference on conducting a new research or invalidating other related studies. The next slide will be presented by Ms. Louise May Nerva. Assumption The research study anchors the assumption that the people surrounding the lake and industry have a significant contribution to the eutrophication of Laguna Lake, and it can be improved as time goes by. This research study believes that this is very timely, relevant to the current situation that Laguna Lake and even the other lake face today. Definition of Terms This study determines the effect of eutrophication on the surface water quality. Moreover, this study will provide a solution to the underlying problem. To furthermore understand about the contents of this research paper, here are some keywords to help you out. Algae, type of plant that grows in water or damp surfaces and has no stems or leaves. Biochemical oxygen demand, the quantity of oxygen absorbed by bacteria and other microorganisms while they decompose organic matter at a specific temperature under aerobic oxygen present conditions. Chlorination. It is a process of adding chlorine compounds to drinking water to kill parasites, bacteria, and viruses. Domestic supply. Water from any sources used in any residence for bathing, cooking, drinking, washing, or any purpose of local life. Erosion. Refers to a process in which natural forces such as water, wind, ice, and gravity transports rock and soil. Fertilizers. It is a plant food added to soil that has chemicals or natural substance to increase its capability of producing vegetation. Irrigate. The supplying of water to assist in production of crops. Mutagenicity. Induction of permanent transmissible changes in the amount or structure of a cell's organism's genetic material. Natural assets is also referred to as natural resource assets coming from a natural environment. Nitrogen, it comes from animal breeding and combustions of gases, an essential nutrient for plants and animals when added too much can make algae grow faster, leading to eutrophication. Phosphorus, a chemical compound commonly found in fertilizers. It is an essential for plant life. However, too much of water in it can increase algae growth, speeding up eutrophication. Phytoplankton are microscopic algae. They serve as food for a variety of sea creatures. They may grow and multiply quickly forming agal blooms when there are too many nutrients available in the water. Sediment A solid material that is transported and stored in a new location. It is made up of rocks and stones and as well as plant and animal fossils. Tributaries A creek or canal that flows into a larger river or lake. Turbidity Is a measure of relative clarity in a certain liquid. Watershed An area of a land the drains on a lake, stream, pond, river, or other bodies of water. Waterways, a canal or route for the water to travel. And lastly, zooplankton, one of the most important food sources for aquatic organisms, especially planktivorous fish. The review of the related literature 
will be discussed by Tricia Santos. To achieve the objectives of the case study, the review of related literature will be discussed. So, before we talk about the biggest problem that concerns the Laguna Lake, what are the causes of eutrophication? Well, a lake can be naturally eutrophic when positioned in a fertile area where nutrient-enriched soils are located. But, according to Khan and Mohammed in 2014, various lakes and reservoirs point to wastewater as the main source of eutrophication since untreated wastewater contains nitrogen of about 25 to 40 mg per liter and phosphorus with 6 to 10 mg in every liter of wastewater. In fact, agriculture is the largest source of water pollution as drainage water from agricultural lands contain phosphorus and nitrogen. Extensive use of fertilizer can result in excessive concentrations of nutrients in agricultural runoff. Laguna Lake, or most commonly known as the Laguna de Bay, is located at the southeast portion of Manila in Philippines. The lake is used for a multitude of purposes like fishery, irrigation, power generation, as well as navigation. Laguna de Bay is a shallow, eutrophic since the 1930s and is usually a muddy lake. Its average depth is only 2.8 meters and the surface area is about approximately 900 square kilometers. Since the annual flow of lake is almost similar of that in Manila Bay, seawater can flow back to the lake at the end of the dry season with reliance to the hydrological condition of the 24-kilometer Pasig River. Nutrient pollution is a major concern in the lake. Nitrogen and phosphorus can trigger the growth of dense plants like water hyacinth as well as the death of animals living in the lake due to lack of oxygen. A recent assessment from the Laguna Lake Development Authority or LLDA has given the lake an overall ranking of C negative for water quality and F for fisheries on the scale of A to F with F being the lowest. Even though it ranked F for fishery, still a third of the fish resource in Manila comes from the Laguna Lake. Different environmental threats have sparked multiple times due to the attempts to clean up the lake and ease the pressure on its overly stretched ecosystem. In that light, other strategies should be applied to heal the lake so that it will continue to deliver its benefits for the growing human population. Despite its demanding responsibilities, what is being done to alleviate the eutrophication in Laguna Lake? Well, there are various efforts being applied with the aim of saving the lake, like investing in improved land management practices, diminishing the usage of phosphate detergents, and capping the total amount of nitrogen and phosphorus that can be released from the discharge points. But the greatest being done is EUF. The pollutants that go into the Laguna Lake are controlled by different regulations and systems, mainly by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DENR and its subsidiary organization, namely the Laguna Lake Development Authority or LLDA. The regulations in the lake are characterized by the system of environmental user fee or EUF. In the said system, the polluters are obliged to pay tax according to their volume of discharge. The rate of tax depends on the biochemical oxygen demand or BOD of the wastewater being emitted. According to the Ministry of Environment in 2016, the taxation is now given to approximately 1,400 facilities and 31 cases between 1998 and 2000 were reported where businesses are forced to suspend their operations as penalty for violating the regulation. The taxation is divided into two types which are fixed and progressive. For the fixed taxation, 15,000 pesos is enforced on a business with a daily discharge of equal to or greater than 150 cubic meter. 10,000 pesos for a business with daily discharge of between 31 and less than 150 cubic meters and 5,000 pesos on business emitting daily discharge of less than 31 cubic meter. 
For the progressive rate, businesses that emit BOD less than 50 mg per liter are charged of 5 pesos per kilogram of BOD, whereas businesses with emissions of BOD equal to or greater than 50 mg per liter will be required to pay 30 pesos per kilogram of BOD. The catchment area of the Laguna Lake stretches over a vast area of 3,820 square kilometers where 41 and 52 percent are covered by natural vegetation of forests and farmlands respectively. Because of this, the lake has more inflow of infiltration water which comes from rainfall on forests that penetrates the soil. As the lack of control measures is evident in the Laguna Lake, other solutions can be recommended for the betterment of the water quality of the lake. Various solutions can be applied to aid eutrophication in water bodies. According to Khan and Mohammed in 2014, these solutions can be divided into two categories which are biological and mechanical control. Biological control is composed of phytoremediation, while mechanical control consists of fertilizer requirement, eutrophication sources, and nutrient loading. Nutrient monitoring and mathematical models, and public awareness and legislations. Some of these are already being done to the lake but needs more fangs to make sure that everyone will follow. Phosphorus and nitrogen-induced eutrophication may lead to water quality difficulties in aquatic systems, especially in fresh waters worldwide. Naturally, the processing of nutrients in surficial habitats remove phosphorus and nitrogen in water. Periphytons are considered as one of the tools to remove nutrients from the water column in low thick waters and wetlands as they uptake, deposit, and filter nutrient particulates from the water. Generally, periphytons tend to increase the retention and deposition of nutrients, especially phosphorus. Phytoremediation is a biological control measure applied to lessen eutrophication. In fresh waters, phytoremediation has been suggested effective to reduce toxicity of waters caused by microorganisms that release ammonia and sulfide during the degradation of proteins released from the food industries. Several plant species are discovered to reduce the excessive amount of nitrogen and phosphorus in aquatic systems. The challenges correlated with eutrophication can be defeated through the application of several mechanical means of implementing strategies to minimize nutrient inflow while the retention of nutrient is maximized. Some of these strategies are, firstly, Fertilizers are believed to be one of the major sources of nutrients that trigger eutrophication. In that note, the use of alternative sources of fertilizers that can supply phosphorus at a slow rate will be a suitable choice. Furthermore, for soils with high phosphorus content, other nutrients like sulfur and potassium can be added to achieve the most economical level of production. A survey by the South Coast Estuaries project revealed that more than 50% of their soil samples that had high phosphorus status can stand fertile on its own without the application of fertilizers for at least one year. Secondly, it is natural that the concentration of phosphorus in lakes can range from 14 to 17 parts per billion, but then the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States recommended to limit it to 25 parts per billion. Yet, many lakes have nutrient levels above the limit. Therefore, to regulate eutrophication and re-establish the quality of water, it is essential to scrutinize and impede the inputs of phosphorus and nitrogen, reduce erosion of the soil, and to develop new technologies that will limit the phosphorus and nitrogen contents of overly enriched soils. Thirdly, according to Khan and Muhammad in 2014, several problems in eutrophication can be addressed by preventing the abnormal growth of blue-green as well as other undesirable algae. A possible attempt to control eutrophication is the installation of an aeration and circulation equipment called current control system that can control the inflow of river and surface waters. Lastly, and the most important, public awareness about the environment can shape the ability of individuals to understand their surroundings.
Public awareness includes the loss and sensitivity to changes of natural environment. Understanding the cause and effect relationship between the quality of the environment and human behavior. An understanding of how the environment works as a system and a sense of responsibility for common heritage of the earth like natural resources with the aim of preserving them for future generations to witness and take care of. The awareness of local people about their environment and water resources has a vital and lasting impact to the environment. And only cooperative community effort can effectively reduce nutrient inputs to bodies of water, like the case of Lake Washington where the reduction to the use of detergent was a result of public awareness. The methodology will be discussed by Oliver Agsalda. Chapter 3 Methodology the researchers used two different studies about control measures of eutrophic waters. The control measure is classified into two, biological control and mechanical control. For the biological control, the method used is phytoremediation and for the mechanical control, nutrient input manipulation method is used. First control measure is phytoremediation. It is said to be effective in reducing the toxicity of waters caused by microorganisms released, releasing ammonia and sulfide. The research applied in this study is the study of Lou Kin and others in 2008 entitled Phytoremediation to Remove Nutrients and Improve Eutrophic Storm Waters Using Water Lettuce, Pistia stratiotis. L. For the experimental design, they used the east and west ponds of St. Lucie Estuary Watershed and they used the water lettuce as plant for the phytoremediation process. The pictures shown below are the graph of water pH in control treatment plant plots of east and west ponds. For the chemical analysis, the parameters that are measured and the equipment used is shown in the table below. For the water pH and electron conductivity, they used pH or ion or conductivity meter. For water turbidity, they used turbidity meter. For the total phosphorus, they used molybdenum blue method. For nitrate and phosphate, they use chromatograph for ammonium and total keldal nitrogen. They use discrete auto analyzer, carbon nitrogen analyzer for plant nitrogen, and inductively coupled plasma atomic emission spectroscopy for phosphorus in digester. The results showed general water quality improvement as shown in the figure. The ammonia plus nitrate number for treatment plot is lower than the control plot for east and west ponds. Moreover, reduction of N or nitrogen and phosphorus concentration had achieved in the experiment. As you can see in the figure, the total nitrogen concentration is relatively low for treatment than in control. The results also showed the plant N and phosphorus removal potential. As seen in the figures, the total P in the water for treatment plant plot is lower than the control plot. And lastly, for the physiological limits, the nitrogen in plant shoots is lower than the plant roots as shown in the figure below. So, to sum up everything, the figure below shows the listed value of different parameters tested in control and remediation of east and west funds. We can see the positive values of percent reduction for, for all the parameters that can contribute to eutrophication, which means that the phytoremediation process is a great control method to reduce eutrophication in water. Uh, so for next, control measure is nutrient input manipulation. Uh, 
we based on the study of Schindler D on 2012 entitled The Dilemma of Controlling Cultural Eutrophication in of Flakes. It performed experimental additions and reductions of nutrients to different flakes. So, for the experimental design, the method that they used are experimental fertilization of flakes using phosphorus alone, using nitrogen alone, and using both phosphorus and nitrogen, as well as reducing phosphorus inputs with or without manipulating nitrogen inputs. Should in the figure are the lakes from several locations in North America and Europe. So with time, a standing crop would develop in response to phosphorus alone that would equal to response on both phosphorus and nitrogen. Okay. So next the figure below shows the graph of total nitrogen nitrate total phosphorus and chlorophyll A change with response to time. For the experimental fertilization of lakes using nitrogen alone, uh, the researcher found out that there was no evidence of any fertili fertilizing effect of nitrogen. Then after addition of nitrate ceased, nitrate concentration returned to pre-fertilization values quickly. For experimental fertilization of full lakes with both phosphorus and nitrogen, uh, it showed rapid increases in phytoplankton. Their population developed in proportion to phosphorus concentrations. Lastly, for reduction of phosphorus inputs with and without reducing inputs of nitrogen, as you can see here, there is a rapid increase in chlorophyll A during the fertilization process and after the fertilization ceased, the phosphorus and cl chlorophyll A returned rapidly to near background as well as the nitrogen and the dissolved organic nitrogen. Uh, the dissolved organic nitrogen remained high for several years. So phytoplankton in all the fertilized lakes at ELA recovered rapidly from eutrophication in proportion to phosphorus. In summary, it can be determined in the experiments that reduction of phosphorus input can reduce nitrogen production and phytoplankton population. The only method that has that has had proven success in reducing the eutrophication of flakes is reducing input of phosphorus. Long-term whole ecosystem experiments and case histories of lake recovery provide the only reliable evidence for policies to reduce eutrophication. For the conclusion, it will be discussed by Elaine Cavanta. Eutrophication has caused many problems in many freshwater and coastal marine ecosystems globally. Without proper management, eutrophication can appear to be permanent unless there are substantial changes. This research study determines the significant contribution of people surrounding the lake and the industry to the eutrophication of Laguna Lake. Control and management of cultural eutrophication is a complex issue and will require the collective efforts of scientists, policymakers, and citizens to reduce nutrient inputs to develop effective long-term biomanipulation techniques and eventually restore aquatic communities. For the study, different methods of adding and reducing nutrients input were used to determine which is better for reducing nitrogen in water and phytoplankton population. The experimental additions and reduction performed were experimental fertilizations of lakes with phosphorus alone, experimental fertilization of lakes with nitrogen alone, experimental fertilization of full lakes with both phosphorus and nitrogen, reducing phosphorus inputs and with and without reducing inputs of nitrogen. The method that the researcher chose is nutrient input manipulation. Skindler stated that in this method, various lakes were subjected to experimental nutrient addition and reductions to assess the impact of nutrient manipulation on eutrophication. 
pathways from a growing human population and increasing agricultural production are likely to increase pea inputs and eutrophication in coming decades. Decisions about mitigating eutrophication will be made in the context of multiple environmental threats due to changing climate, land use, and other factors. This decision should use the best scientific information relevant to the scale of the problems. Different methods of reducing and adding nutrient inputs were used in the study to decide which is better for reducing nitrogen in water and phytoplankton population. And the researcher concluded that the reduction of phosphorus inputs can decrease the eutrophication of lakes for the reason that it has been proved that this is the only method that had been proven success in reducing eutrophication of lakes. It is mentioned in the method that the phytoplankton in all fertilized lakes at ELA recovered rapidly from eutrophication in proportion to phosphorus regardless of whether nitrogen inputs were terminated. On behalf of Group 5, this is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening and watching. Have a great day!